Hello everyone. Welcome to Dream Radio. Uh, new title, whatever. I keep changing it. I'm probably going to keep changing it. I still haven't really settled on what I want to call this channel. But anyway, this is why capitalism is over. Although, don't worry, I'm not going to be cringe posting here. It's some kind of weird, like, Marxist, hey, like, communism, whatever. It has nothing to do with any of these usual things that you hear about capitalism. It's just... Uh, a few of the ideas in here will be plagiarized from Alexander Bard, who's a philosopher you can find on the internet. Pretty interesting fella. But basically, there's some interesting things you could ask about capitalism, you know. So one of them is, well, what are the limits of it? What is the question that it really asks of you? And the question that it asks fundamentally is, what is it that you are not willing to sell? That's sort of the thing. And um, the answer should be at least there's some things that you're not willing to sell. Some people don't have this, but but more interestingly, I mean, I know like I have a friend who's very he's he's always saying, oh, the market is just causing this. So you know, if you complain about what's going on in like the media or or like censorship in these companies, like well, it's just market forces demanding blah 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 blah, and like it's kind of ignorant. I don't think he follows the the whole like uh, like the whole spiel that much. He's kind of behind the beat, you know, only talking about cancel culture once it becomes like a normal thing for you to read about BBC. But, uh, the thing that you have to know with capitalism is there's like a simple question, right? You can ask something really simple. It's like, okay, okay. Money is the most important thing in the world, whatever, whatever. Um, what are people buying with that money? And as soon as you ask that question, then you start to like encounter, uh, a lot of interesting different conundrums where you realize that like, yeah, there's things that people try to buy with money that they can't buy. And there's things that uh, you can take, you know, you can fung are fungible in one direction and not in the other. Like you can, if you have this, you can get some money from it. But if you have money, then you can't get this, right? So I thought it was really funny last year when Mike Bloomberg, I think he spent $500 trying to run for president he wanted to become the democrat nominee so he puts five hundred dollars in this like crazy roadshow trying to become like the guy i don't know why he wanted to be president what his deal was uh except that when nobody wanted him to be president he cried on live tv like an idiot <laughs> so the thing is it's like all right all right all right money's the most important then why is mike bloomberg spending five hundred dollars on this shit and like failing so catastrophically what's going on here so alexander bard says that capitalism is over we are now entering into attentionalism and he says well we're not even really sure like people say attention economy but even that is still in like a capitalistic worldview like who's to say that attention in the way that it functions the so who's to say that the substrate that like attention is moving in even is functioning like a marketplace we don't know yet it's still so early on in the game a lot of these companies like facebook and so on that try to they try like the most important thing for them is to monetize attention and so they kind of try to turn it into an attention economy but that doesn't mean that it fundamentally works like an economy and that doesn't mean that people who are successful in the ordinary economy can just like move their that success into the attention economy because they can't as we've seen with mr mike bloomberg um but i'm not sure attentionalism it's a very i will say a very early phase idea uh one thing that's very interesting about philosophy is that usually philosophy comes in after the fact and explains what happened in the previous era. Uh, so if you try to say this is what's going on right now, you're not going to be able to fully capture it. So I think that that's pretty reasonable. Um, but here's the thing. He, he also says something else very interesting, which is that uh, money is like worthless. I know that's like a weird thing to say. I know lots of people have have issues where it's like, well, I don't have shelter. I don't have food, whatever, whatever. I just mean that in the on the on the highest levels of things money is like almost worthless i watched this weird movie it was kind of because a friend and i were doing a podcast about about uh hollywood losers but we we did i watched this movie with seth rogan where he's like acting like this kind of uh brooklyn leftist journalist and he has this weird like love relationship with his old babysitter who's now like a girl boss politician who used to be the secretary of state and is now running for president. It's like this really weird, like, um, 
this really weird drama that's meant to kind of like capture this like Twitter left wing like weird like neoliberal but but pretends that it's revolutionary worldview into a piece of propaganda and on one hand it's a weird and me very meta film because like the the whole thing the whole thing in the in the weird like neoliberal wannabe leftist whatever worldview is that they're always trying to cast themselves in a revolutionary role um because there has to be like like a phantom enemy that isn't really real in order that they have something to like exercise their power against otherwise they just look crazy to themselves so it's like they're always pretending that like for some reason we have to imagine that christian conservatism is still like the dominant cultural force and like it's like the the it's like it's like the perpetual underdog as the the actual leader is like the perpetual underdog in like a fake drama and it's so funny because it's like okay if it's really true that these like evil forces that you're fighting against in this movie are the dominant forces then why uh this movie costs 40 million dollars so why isn't their uh worldview being like spouted in 40 million dollar propaganda movies you can ask me that question um and the answer is that it's not and the reason is that it's not the dominant cultural worldview it's the anyway but the point but it was like a terrible movie it was like really bad and and I was watching it and it was make, making me realize that um, that there's this the dominant cultural worldview right now is like so fake that the it's like it's like become impossible to capture within a convincing narrative and even if you have 40 million dollars you still can't do it like you want to be able to create a convincing narrative or convincing propaganda around your political uh, project but you can't, even if you have $40 million, you still can't do it. And that's kind of like showing that money is worthless. Meanwhile, if I'm Kanye West and I'm literally broke, literally have no money, because of the faith that people have in me, I can go and be like, hey man, uh, can I have $20 million? I wanna make like sneakers and someone will say yes. And the reason is that there's like, well, okay, so here's where I was gonna come in with the Alexander Bard thing. I don't think it's exactly attention. I think attention is very cheap. Um, I know it's hard to get attention, but there's like spiritual levels to it. And I think the thing that appears to have like the most power amongst attention is faith, really, ultimately. It's like we're entering into a phase where faith is the new... Faith should always have been more powerful than money. But if things become shaky, but 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 I think it's coming back. I think like like the power of faith in this dark time that we're in is... is becoming amplified relative to the challenges that is being put to it. So, faith. Why is faith so... Why would I say this? So, this is the interesting thing. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bury the lead. This is a bit of a ramble. But the most interesting thing that I observed recently is that the two largest financial growers... And the reason why this is important is because you have this question of like, okay, if I can take... If I have this and I can get anything I want... But if I have this, I can't necessarily get this again. Then uh, this thing that I can get anything I want from it is more valuable than whatever else. And people usually think of money that way uh, because, you know, you can buy whatever with money. But you can't buy faith with money, but you can get money with faith. And so you see that faith is actually higher up. And this is the interesting, this is mind-blowing to me. The two biggest growing assets in the last decade where, like, I believe that faith is starting to become, like, is starting to really ascend again in a strange way are Bitcoin and Tesla. Very weird, isn't it? Because, te in, you know, the, the old school investors who are talking about, um, what do you call it, uh, like a oh, company valuation well they don't make enough profit well the profit thing doesn't matter but they're like well they don't have enough sales they're not making enough revenue to justify such a high stock price i think i heard somewhere that like 90 years worth of growth has already been priced into tesla stock which is like crazy uh so they're thinking well in the capital market like it doesn't make sense you shouldn't be able to have this the share price be this high or the market cap be this high and then bitcoin is a okay Bitcoin is a faith-based asset. If you are a buyer of Bitcoin, you have faith in two things. Um, maybe just one. 
faith in basically decentralization and then you well whatever your faith in decentralization and the kind of like political uh and like libertarian possibilities associated with that and also you are losing faith in the current monetary system so it's like it's like faith betting against the current monetary system with inflation and with uh censorship and faith for the new one which is like no inflation and freedom and then tesla is also faith-based it is uh faith in elon musk the man himself king elon Maybe we'll solve everything if Elon becomes king. I don't, I'm not joking. I'm not joking, but that would be a topic for another video. Um, but we could have King Elon and that would be pretty cool. Because, yeah, he's cool. And uh, it appears that all the things you're supposed to be able to solve with voting, you can't solve with voting. Maybe you'll solve them with King Elon. But that's the thing. The point is this. Profound point is that the two largest growing assets in the financial market are all faith-based. It's a movement of faith driving the Tesla share price up and driving Bitcoin up. And I know that a lot of bankers and stuff are starting to come in and help pump the Bitcoin price, but fundamentally, like those people, they're not, uh, they're not the, like, the ideological or spiritual core that like, means that no matter what, like, people are always going to want cryptocurrency. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty incredible. But what does that mean? What does that mean? You know, you've got a guy like Joe Rogan. He could probably run for president and win if he wanted to, but he doesn't want to. But, uh, and you know, he has a lot of money, but he's not good at capitalism. He's not like that interested in money. Um, he doesn't want to start like his own podcasting company or anything like that, even though he could, and he'd make more money if he did that than just joining Spotify. He just wants to fucking make his podcasts and talk to people, but he's worth so much money. And if he wanted to be president, maybe he could. He'd have a better shot at it than Mike Bloomberg, even though he doesn't have 500 million dollars of like paper money that he can just burn on something like that, on some stupid, um, like ego driven thing. I don't know, something to think about. What does that even mean coming forward? Why, uh, why? Why is life like this? I don't know. I think that's very interesting. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this, everybody. And uh, God bless. Take care. This is crazy. I don't even know this cat. I'm out here. I'm out here. And some cat just came over and started rubbing up against me. I'm out here like at a park. Anyways, rub it up against me. Everybody knows I'm sweet and good. <laughs>